I leaned over him, holding out his phone. Oh, the perfect Gia swooping in to save the day. The little Italian princess is so valiant in saving her brother. Well, fuck you. I let out a long breath. Just call him. This has nothing to do with me. The only reason I'm here is for our mother. Fury swept across his face. How precious. His voice was filled with venom. Well, I have news for you. Our mother is dead, dead in the ground. She's not up in heaven looking down with pride at her little girl. So if you're doing anything for her, you're a fool and wasting your time. His words were like a punch to the gut. I closed my eyes for a second so I could regain my composure. The last thing I would do was show him any weakness. To my surprise, he reached for the phone in my hand and dialed. A few seconds later, he spoke. I remained standing over him, frozen, afraid if I moved, he would change his mind. Okay, old man. I'll stop. For now. The conversation lasted less than five seconds. He hung up and slid his fingers along my bare thigh. Looking good, sis. I slapped him across one smooth, chiseled cheek, but he didn't even flinch, only gave me another slow smile. I walked out without looking back. In a near panic, I fought my way through the crowd that was madly hopping up and down to the Reverend Horton heat. The squirming mass was illuminated sporadically by flickering lights from the stage, making me disoriented as I pushed toward the door. The air seemed to be sucked out of the club by the frenetic energy, and I fought to breathe as I pushed my way through the sweaty, bopping bodies that were bumping me this way and that. Finally, I broke free and flung open the door to the fresh night air. I put my hands on my knees to try to catch my breath. My entire body shook uncontrollably. Christopher always had that effect on me.